All right, what's up? I was playing with the angles for a little minute, but I think I finally got it. So basically in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's like to be a Nigerian trans man because it was asked by a fellow Nigerian, um, I'm assuming trans person. So I'm gonna just talk about my experience. So first off, yeah, if you didn't know, I'm Nigerian. Um, I consider myself, I just say I'm Nigerian, but I'm also like, well, African-American, I guess is like the same thing. Like my dad is literally from Nigeria and then my mom, like we're American descent Africans, you know what I'm saying? So like, I guess half Nigerian, half African American air quotes, because I would love to be able to say I was full Nigerian or I was a Nigerian and Ghanaian or something, but I don't know. Shout out to slavery. But um, <clears throat> yeah, anyways, uh, I just wanna talk about my experience being a Nigerian trans man and how like that was in the Nigerian dynamic culture wise, because it's different than like the black experience. like. You know having nigerian parents is like different again my dad is nigerian but i've had like um my stepmom at one point was also nigerian so i was technically being raised in a nigerian two parent two nigerian parent house so i do know what that is like to have like a nigerian mom and everything air quotes because she was my stepmom but she took on the mother role for like a cool minute i was in high school so basically felt like i had a nigerian mom and, and dad so yeah um and it even goes beyond that because I'm, i can even talk about how it feels or how it is just having like nigerian uncles cousins blah, blah, blah. so we could first start there and then i'll get to like the parent aspect at the end but like first off if you're nigerian you know nigerians love to have parties and things like that i remember like we used to host a bunch of parties like we would always have nigerian parties so my i would go to my uncle's house in san diego like i would just be mingling with the family like i had a bunch of uncles you know how that goes like just a bunch of Nigerian uncles, um, you know, my dad's brothers, uh, everybody. Like, it was just a big group of Nigerians at these parties that were blood related to me, um, cousins, all that, right? And at first, like, before I came out as trans, before I realized it, everything was cool. Like, it was a vibe. Like, I would go to Nigerian parties. It was, it was fun. It was a vibe. But after I came out, like, I kind of stopped. And this, this stopped not only on, like, the Nigerian side, like, my dad's side, but also on my mom's side, which is kind of related to this because I just want to say, like, it's not just a Nigerian thing, but it does go across just, like, the board, right? Like, my parents stopped necessarily, they kind of stopped bringing me around family because we're, like, they were unsure of, like, you know what I mean? It's just, it was just weird to navigate. And I'm not shaming them, but it's just what it is. Like, my parents didn't want to, I guess, just, like, throw me into having to navigate the family dynamic and part of me wishes that i just got thrown into it and part of me is like it's, it's just a weird thing because now i'm at an age where like i can express that to myself and like I'm, i think i'm ready to do that now but when i was 15 16 17 18 like that just we didn't even know how to have a conversation with family members about that like it's just not the norm like you know what i'm saying like none of my no one on my dad's side is openly gay trans and there's maybe like one or two people on my mom's side that are openly gay, but trans, absolutely not. So like having to navigate that was just like, it just has not been done before. So like, I think my parents were just kind of like, what do we do? So yeah, at, at a point, like I just stopped mingling as hard. Like when I really, like when I started being on testosterone, it's kind of when I, I don't like I didn't go to families like houses, but they would come over and they would just see me and I wouldn't like nope It was kind of like an elephant in the room like nobody would explain Maybe one of my cousins told her like parents like hey, so you know Chris like this is what's going on with him but Maybe they maybe she did that like you know what I mean like behind the scenes but like face-to-face -face conversation like hey This this is who no that never happened like it was it's kind of like just an unsaid thing like no one ever said anything and I realized too, my, my parents had told me too, is like, I they want me to be the one to say it because they don't want to just like, they don't want to speak for me, which I understand. But um, yeah, that's, 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 that's just how it was, honestly. Like, so like uncles wise, I'm gonna say uncles to so like my dad's brothers and stuff like that. Like, it's weird because like I said, we haven't had a face-to-face -face conversation about any of this, of my trans identity or even when I was just like really presenting masculine, like so I, I was considered gay, like you could tell I was gay, like I just looked like different, you feel me? Like, cause that before I started looking like a straight dude, I was just looking like a really masculine girl. So even then I feel like you, you can pass with that more, right? Like, oh, that's still, you know what I'm saying? Blah, 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 like my name was the same. But once I start going by a different name, different pronouns, I have a mustache, like it's like, what's going on? I don't know. 
But this thing too about how no one said it to anyone's face, I feel like everyone knows though. So it's literally an elephant in the room. That's the this is the best way to describe my existence. It's like an elephant in the room. My uncles come over, like literally one of my uncles came over like a couple months back, saw me, we talked, like it's chill, like, but we don't ever just say it. And I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing because they're not mean to me at all. Like my Nigerian family, they're not mean to me. It's more so just like an oh when they see me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like it's awkward at times bro because i went to like this nigerian party like two months ago back in august like two or three months ago and one of my my dad's friends i'm not sure if i'm related to him i think it's my dad's cousin friend i don't really know just big family but we were leaving and then he was greeting my dad like oh what's up and then i was behind my dad because i came with my dad to the party and he was like oh like he like they don't know whether to call me like my birth name or what because i look different like but it was it was awkward but like also kind of relieving because i was just like like he didn't know what to call me and i was just like hey like it's still me and he was like oh it's still you i was like yeah yeah and i was like and i was just like oh yeah you like what's up i'm crazy and he was like oh like you know what i'm saying just like chill but i think especially in like a quick exchange like that like we weren't sitting down at the table for an hour like it was just like a passing by type thing so for that i, I want to give grace to like the whole family just for that little interaction for it not being weird like it was definitely awkward because i like you've been seeing me as a girl this whole time you know been calling me my birth name blah, blah, blah. and then i just pull up like hey what's up i'm christian like damn like it's, it's a change like if i was in their position i'd be like you know just shocked not, but they're never but they're not disrespectful like like i cannot believe you would do this nothing like that it's just like oh like who like like who are you like who, <laughs> does that make sense so yeah i haven't got any like backlash but i will say this is now though and i feel like it might be because now like i'm a whole adult so it's like whatever i do at this point is like really my decision for real but back when i was like 16 17 and i honestly found out like i was like 15 16 when i really like realize like oh my god being trans is a thing i can literally pursue this like this is my path to take like i realized that um in my nigerian household so i lived with my mom until high school and during high school i moved here to this house with my dad because my mom wanted me to go to a better school and the schools around my dad's house were a little bit better um the schools where i live with my mom like i was going to private school and it was a really nice private school over there but um i wanted to go to public school and the public schools over there in Long Beach were just not it. So the public schools over here were a little bit better. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, but I went to private school in Long Beach until I was 14. When I was 14, 13 or 14, I came here with my dad. And yeah, so my first year, freshman year was cool. You feel me? Like I was literally a girl. I would get out of wear pink hoodies. Like, I don't know. It's not even like it wasn't me because it was. Like I still wore pink. I'm still spun. Like you feel me? It's just that my my i wasn't changing my i wasn't socially transitioning yet like uh, i didn't even know that i like girls at that point like i was just kind of roaming i was 13 bro i was 13 or 14 i was lit i was just playing the xbox playing games like i was just chilling bro as a kid should chill you feel me but uh 14 was cool you know just playing sports just having a living life with friends literally living life it was just chill like my gender identity didn't really bother me hardcore at that point and i, I want to say that out loud like me being a girl or like presenting feminine presenting female didn't bother me like like aggressively it was probably like little micro bothers some things throughout my life where i was just like dang why i'm on the girl side or like dang they don't think i could do it because i'm a girl or like dang why i gotta wear this skirt you know what i'm saying like little things like that but it didn't really open up something inside of me until I was like six, almost 16 when I started. Because when I was 14, I didn't know I liked girls. When I was 15, I started dabbling. I was like, oh my God, I like girls. When I was 16, I liked girls. Like I had a girlfriend and I, that's when I realized like, oh my God, like I'm in this relationship and like something about just being somebody's girlfriend doesn't really like, like I just didn't like the, like, uh like I like being in a relationship, but I didn't like being a girlfriend. So I was like, oh my God, like I would just be playing around in the relationship. I'll be like, like, hey, like, to my girlfriend at the time, I'll be like, hey, like, what if I was your boyfriend? Like, you know, like, that would just come out of me. Like, no one was, she didn't tell me, hey, can you be my boyfriend? Like, nothing like that. I would just literally be like, hmm, like, I'm really masked. Like, hmm, can I, like, what if I was your boyfriend? Like, what if you call me Chris? Like, what if, what if you refer to me as he and pronouns? And I remember I told her, I told her, like, my girlfriend at the time, I told her, hey, like, just call me he and pronouns. And she started doing it. And shout out to her, too. Like, no cap, because 
like I had stepping stones to get to where I'm at. And I want to say shout out to her because, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have to have that supportive of a partner. We were literally 16, but still, like, she wasn't like, oh, why am I going to call you? Like, you're a girl. You're not a guy. She was really like, okay, we'll try it out. Let's see how you feel. And I, I, I love being called he, him pronouns. So then I started telling my best friends, I was like, hey, can you start referring to me? Is this, is this, they did it. Like, so, yeah, shout out to y'all for real, the OG squad. Like, I for real mess with y'all. Y'all literally helped me just realize who I am because I didn't, I wasn't able to tell my parents, hey, can you call me he, him pronouns? Hey, can you call me Chris? Hey, can you call me Christian? Hey, can you call me Julian? Like, I didn't, or what was my OG middle name? My OG middle name was, it wasn't Julian. It was, uh, it was something else. I forgot. Elijah. Elijah, that was that was it. It was either gonna be it was Elijah. So Christian Christian Ichiblu, I used to say that Elijah was gonna be my middle name, but it just didn't stick. I like Julian. Julian feels right. That, that's this is my name. So yeah, I just wanna say like my parents. I couldn't tell them, hey, can you just try calling me Christian and refer to me as he and pronouns? Like I didn't have that. Like that 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 wasn't a thing. So like yeah, for real, shout out to my friends and everybody that was around me that actually like, supported me because now I'm here. But um yeah, so. That was 15, 16, and I just realized for real, like, that this is who I wanted to be for real. So I told my parents, I told my mom, I remember I was just like sitting on the couch. I told my mom, hey, you know, I feel like, like, I really feel like I'm a boy. Like I want to present masculine and it, it did not go well. I basically got gaslit and she was just, these concepts to my parents weren't a thing. So for me to just wait, so for me to just be in the living room chilling while we watching a TV show, and I'm like, hey, I feel like a boy. It's a lot. I can understand why it's a lot for them and how they responded, especially how they probably like the relationship they have with their parents. I doubt their parents let them open up. You feel me? Like I'm not mad at my parents because I realized they didn't have the capacity to open accept me in the way that I probably needed to be or wanted to be. But now they came around and they've been learning, so I appreciate them for that for being open to learning because now they're like on board. But definitely did not go well at first, and in my Nigerian household here. Definitely did not go well. I feel like I told my dad and he was kind of reluctant, but he never, he was reluctant. I'm not even going to cap. I remember like literally crying one time and I'm not shading my parents because they're doing the best they can with what they had. I'm just telling my experience. But I remember what, like my first, like as soon as I start talking about it, I remember I'm like, my dad's a mental health professional. Like he's literally a super, like he's, his, his job is a, is a mental health counselor. Like he works in the psychiatric department. He works in mental health therapy, all that. Right. So he... So I think he was the one that called Kaiser when I was literally just like, hey, I feel like a dude. I feel like a dude. Like, I feel like a boy. Like, there's something going on. There's something going on. I think it's, he realized, like, hey, I'm going to get you checked out. So I remember him calling Kaiser. I don't know if it was him or me, whatever, but I ended up going to, like, this intro. Like, basically, Kaiser had classes to inform parents and and their children about what it means if you think that you're trans. So we had to go watch, like, a PowerPoint video. And we were in like a meeting with a bunch of other kids and their parents. And I remember my dad was just in the waiting room. He was like, I cannot believe you made me call off work to come with you to this trans stuff. Because to him, he didn't, he thought I was just like, like saying something out of my butt, right? Like, like, oh, you feel like a boy all of a sudden. But I think when he started to go, like realize, he was like, oh, and he came around. But because you know what I mean? Like he didn't have any knowledge on this and neither did I. That's why we were both in the PowerPoint thing. I, I had a little bit of knowledge. I was watching YouTube videos, but I didn't really know. I was 16 years old. Like, what do you expect me to do? But yeah, I remember him just being salty because he had to call off work to take me to this Kaiser like meeting at like 2 p.m. Uh, he had to take me out of school. So <laughs> I just remember he'd be like, he was like mad, but I was all sad. I was like, because in my heart, I'm just like, dang, I wish you could understand. Like, I really mean this. Like, I'm not trying to waste your time. Like, I couldn't drive at that. I think I was either like 15, 16. I don't think I had my permit yet. I could not drive myself. I was like, sorry, dad. Like, I need you to take me. And he did. But and I want to preface, he was not happy to be taking me and having me do all this, but he did it, which I think says a lot about who he is as a person and like his love for me because he didn't understand what I had just hit him with, but he still loved me. So he was like, okay, you need to go to Kaiser. Come on. I'm not happy about this, but let's go. Um, and from the motherly side of it, my Nigerian stepmother, she was absolutely enraged. Like, and I don't think it comes from a place of like hating me. I think it comes from a place of like, also she's from Nigeria. Um, and she hasn't, she hadn't been in America that long either. So African customs are different than American customs. In America, it's literally normal to literally, like, I don't think they have gender affirming care services like the way they do in america and nigeria so it's just not the norm like you can't just go in nigeria to get testosterone and go get top surgery like i don't think that's happening so i can understand why the nigerian perspective is just 
different. Like that, they didn't grow up seeing their peers get top surgery, have hormones. Think, you know what I mean? Like they didn't. That wasn't a thing. At least in the majority, like most Nigerians didn't see that. I don't think that's like that's just not the culture there. That's not the culture. So this is what I'm getting at. But yeah, my, my, the Nigerian side of my parents, like they were definitely enraged. They were just like, "Why would you do this? Like you're you're." you know you're a girl like just stick with it because to them i think they saw it as like i just confused confused that i was just trying to harm myself that i hated myself but like yeah it's and i understand though because it is a very big real thing to just tell someone and the cultural background definitely matters bro like i'm pretty sure if my parents you know what I'm saying my dad and my stepmom were like super duper americanized like they may have just been like if they were knowledgeable about it, like, if they had some idea about what this means to be trans, if they understood that it's not like a, doesn't mean I'm, like, super crazy or, like, it doesn't mean that I hate myself, I think they would be more open to be like, oh, okay, like, hmm, that, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy that you found yourself, blah, blah, blah. but they didn't have that, you know, even my mom, they didn't, they didn't have that to, to console me, to, they didn't, they didn't have that, and I can't be mad at them, but that's just what it is, so, yeah, for me being a Nigerian and being trans it definitely is hard, weird, and I'm still navigating it now because I'm I'm just still navigating it now. I don't I don't this is what I know as of now, but I have not really spoken to my Nigerian side of my family and had a straight up face to face conversation with any of them besides my dad about me being trans. I have not told any of my Nigerian extended family that I'm trans. So maybe this this is a preface to when that actually happens. And on my mom's side as well, I have not told any of my family on my mom's side that I'm trans except except for my nephew, my cousin, like that little cohort. We were like immediate family at one point. So I told them my mom knows, my sister knows, and my brother knows because my sister and my nephew told him because my brother's kids is my nephew, which I told him because we were all connected at one point. But... Yeah, the family honestly really has broken up, and I know for a fact it's because of me. Not because of me, like I made the breakup, but it's my parents just didn't know how to navigate that. My mom didn't know how to bring me around the family anymore, and my dad didn't really know how to bring it up. But it, like, imagine me not telling my Nigerian family. Imagine my dad having to tell his Nigerian. Like, I don't think, you, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if I haven't even had the courage or the real drive to tell my Nigerian family, and that's hard for me, I cannot imagine how hard it is for my dad that doesn't have the language that I have to be able to describe what the trans existence entails. How is he gonna tell that to his family? Like, yeah, my son's trans. Like, what do you even say? Like, like I don't think he has the, the language, which is why, you know, I think it's it, this is on me, my mom too. They, they support me, they kind of get it, they kind of get it, they still think it's a lifestyle I want to I want to live sometimes coming from my black side of the family so I don't they don't have the wording to 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 bring it to life and say it in a way that's not like just a lifestyle you know what I mean that this is just my existence and it's just yeah it's that's literally how I can describe it but you know what I'm saying the more the more life I live I think this will get resolved God is gonna help me for sure um yeah I, I I'm I'm trying I'm, I'm trying i'm just living living the best that i can and being me wholeheartedly um but definitely i'm in a stage of life where i wish a lot of people a lot more people knew and that's it is resting upon me i'm not gonna worry because god got me but i it would be nice if more people knew in all aspects right like any anyone around me so like my friends family I, if we're close i want them to know if my girlfriend's something i want them to know my my mom's family i want them to know my dad's i want them to know so when i come in the room it's not a shock when I look a certain way, it's not a shock when I get a surgery. It's not a shock when something happens due to me being trans. It's not a shock when I just am openly myself and people look at me like, why is this dude acting like a feminine girl? It's more so like, you know what I mean? Like, they would just get it. Well, it's a long journey and it's not easy. And I just want to say that that's probably one of the hardest aspects of navigating outside of myself, this um, experience. Because, of course, in myself, it's, I don't want to say hard, but it's, it's something to experience. This is my journey. This is my my life but that's probably the next thing that has been most directly affected by me is my family like because yes it's me processing this i'm the one that has to go through all this stuff it's but i also have a family and 
it directly affects them as well. So, yeah, I don't, I don't want to stay out here for too long, but I just want to say, you got it. I don't even have it all figured out. And a lot of people might look at me and think that I have it all figured out, but I don't. So maybe it's comforting for you to be like, okay, maybe he doesn't have it figured out. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to have it all figured out. But at the same time, maybe you shouldn't because I think God is going to do that. If you have faith in God, this is the time to really take some deep, some deep trust in God that God can really take you out of anything and really show you what's up. You feel me? Like, you're, it's not don't don't feel stressed to make it all happen and tell everybody today and unless you have that inclination but take it at your pace because it is a lot it's a lot it's a lot mentally to have to tell people stuff and they're not going to get it as you know what i mean they might not get it as soon as you tell them like hey i'm trans this is why they might ask a lot of questions and you have to be emotionally prepared for that or you just have to do it so anyways yeah you guys got it i i think i got it God got us. Um, yeah, I'm about to go eat something. I'm hungry. I've been here for 20 minutes. But I'm glad I made this video. And shout out to my SpongeBob shirt. Shout out to Eric for this if you watch this. It even has a back look. Alright, I'm hungry. It's low-key soup season. I have some beef stew in the fridge. Bye.